Now at 5 a.m., this is WKYT This Morning. Visitations start today for a fallen Louisville police detective who was killed in Lexington over the weekend. We'll have details on Jason Schweitzer's services and how he's being remembered just ahead. Also ahead on WKYT, the first and only debate between Kentucky's U.S. Senate candidates was heated. We're recapping that debate coming up. It was a feisty encounter. Mm -hmm. And trick-or-treaters across the Commonwealth had great weather for Halloween night. And we'll take a look at some of that and your Kentucky forecast all coming up right here on WKYT This Morning. This is WKYT This Morning. Kentucky mornings start right here on WKYT, and it is so good to have you with us this morning. I'm Andrea Walker. And I'm Bill Bryant, and here we are. It is Tuesday, November 1st. Can you believe it? No. Nope. I really can't. <laughs> especially... especially when you walk outside, you can't believe yes. it. Yes. I mean, how lucky can you get? It was beautiful for those trick or treaters last night. Let's check in with Micah in our first alert weather center. Oh, it was phenomenal last night. Walking out and about, kids were everywhere. I mean, nobody was inside. Uh, if they had kids, they were out and walking about, and it, it was really, really nice. We're going to have another nice day in store today. And tomorrow, we're sitting there in the 50s and 60s early this morning. Even some locations this morning are actually at their average high. So we're going to be near a record later on this afternoon at 80 degrees, record being at 83. So the focus of the forecast is obviously that, but also a big change coming in later on this work week. So we're going to go from the 80s to the 50s later on. I'll show you when that happens coming up in just a few minutes. We'll see you then. Thank you. Let's get to the news now. Visitation starts today for one of the two men who died in Lexington over the weekend. Lexington police say a suspected drunk driver hit and killed Detective Jason Schweitzer and UK employee Timothy Moore with her car on South Upper Street early Saturday morning. WKYT's Lauren Miner is at our live desk with some more details and new info. Good morning, Lauren. Good morning, Bill. Today, a visitation will be held to remember Detective Jason Schweitzer. Schweitzer was a father to a little girl, and we're told he just recently found out his wife was pregnant with a little boy. Schweitzer was also a 15-year veteran of the Louisville Metro Police Department in addition to serving as vice president of the FOP Lodge for several years. On Saturday, Schweitzer was in Lexington attending a statewide FOP convention. He had just left a concert and was looking to get something to eat when he and another Louisville officer stopped UK employee Timothy Moore to ask for directions. Police believe believe Suzanne Whitlow was driving drunk and hit Schweitzer and Moore, ultimately killing them. Yesterday, we spoke with River City FOP President David Much Muchler, who described Schweitzer as a passionate detective, but said more than anything, Schweitzer loved his family. And we all got to be part of that, uh, you know, with, uh, with him uh, and Jessica and getting married uh, and having, having their young daughter. Um, and of course, he's very excited. Uh, they just recently found out that he, he you know, they were going to have a son. There will be a visitation for Detective Schweitzer today from 1 to 8 at Ratterman Brothers on Shelbyville Road and tomorrow at noon at St. Michael Catholic Church. The funeral will follow at 1. Schweitzer will be buried at Cave Hill Cemetery. Reporting at the live desk, Lauren Miner, WKYT. Lauren, thank you. A WKYT News investigation looked into the criminal history of the suspect, Suzanne Whitlow. Lexington police charged her with manslaughter and DUI following the crash. Court records show she was also charged with DUI in Lexington in August of 2014. Records say Whitlow did not show up for a hearing that October, and police obtained a warrant for her arrest. Police arrested her again in January of this year on probation violation and non-payment of fines charges. In July, the court ordered her to go to a substance abuse education treatment program. Records show she completed that program just last month. You can keep up with the latest details in this case at WKYT.com or download the WKYT News app and get updates on your phone. We are a week away now from the election here in the United States and in Kentucky, and Kentuckians will have more to vote for on this year's ballot besides the president. Kentucky's U.S. Senate candidates, Lexington Mayor Jim Gray and the incumbent, Senator Rand Paul, met for their only debate of the campaign last night. WKYT's Mike Meyer is live in Lexington recapping that debate. It was heated. Good morning, Mike. Good morning, Andrea. It's quiet outside KET right now, but that was not the case last night. Dozens of supporters for both candidates stood out here before the debate. 
Now inside, it didn't take long for Lexington Mayor Jim Gray to attack, hitting Senator Rand Paul right out of the gate. Paul largely didn't take the bait, but the two did spar briefly when Gray again criticized Paul for running for president. It's perfect on Halloween night because Senator Paul is starting out with Halloween scare tactics. He wants us to believe that his wild ass theories and philosophies are the remedies for everything. I mean, you got an enormous hole in the middle of Lexington. It's been there your entire tenure. You've been there eight years, and it's like you're, you're talking about something that doesn't exist, and here you are running for two offices. Why don't you take a pledge to do your job as mayor? Mostly, though, the debate, the debate focused on issues ranging from the economy to national security, student debt, and the opioid epidemic, just to name a few. Pa uh, Paul said he can't imagine voting for Supreme Court nominee from Hillary Clinton, but he did stop short of saying he would continue to block Democratic appointments. Gray said the Senate should have done its job and given Obama's nominee a hearing. Then we caught up with both candidates after the debate. I enjoyed it. I think it was a good exchange of ideas. Oh, I thought it was a, I thought it was a healthy debate. I'm glad we had it finally. You know, Senator Paul was willing to do six debates in the presidential, and he's only willing to do one here. And I think what he illustrated tonight is why he wasn't willing to do more than one. Now, voters will have the final say as to who will represent Kentucky in the U.S. Senate going forward. The election is one week from today. Live in Lexington, Mike Byer, WKYT. All right, Mike, thank you very much. This morning, a gas fire is still burning in eastern Alabama after a pipeline explosion sparked wildfires and evacuations yesterday. At least one person working at the scene was killed, and several others have been injured. And Henna Daniels has the latest on that massive explosion. Colonial Pipeline has shut down two of its main gas lines, and Shelby County, Alabama, sits under a cloud of thick black smoke. On Monday, crews using heavy equipment hit a petroleum pipeline. Igniting gas and causing a massive explosion. A friend of mine called me and said that he's seen a big smoke cloud. He thought it was a plane crash. I just jumped in my truck from Columbiana and drove down, and we seen the cloud from right in Chelsea, and uh, I thought it was pretty serious at that point, so we rushed over here. The blast sent flames soaring into the air. Houses around the scene were evacuated. I'm told that. Uh, what will happen is we will just have to let the, uh, the, the fuel burn. The blast site is not far from where a line ruptured in September, leading to fuel shortages and gas price spikes in several southern states. This, with now two lines being shut down, could have a ripple effect further into the northeast, thinking New England, and perhaps as far as Canada as well. Hannah Daniels, CBS News. Now, Colonial is responsible for supplying about one-third of the gasoline used on the East Coast every day. New this morning, a federal judge has tentatively approved a more than $150 million settlement in a lawsuit over a West Virginia chemical spill. Both West Virginia American Water Company and chemical maker Eastman Chemical were named in the class action lawsuit. The 2014 chemical spill contaminated drinking water in parts of West Virginia. Attorneys say the money will be given to a affected homeowners and to businesses through an application process. Friends and family are mourning the loss of two Adair County High School students who died in a crash. Police say 15-year-olds Macy Drake and Abby Curry died Friday when their off-road vehicle hit a truck on Highway 206. They say a 14-year-old middle school student was critically injured in the crash. Drake and Curry were sophomores at Adair County High School. School leaders say they're doing what they can to help their students. All right, the time now is 5.08 on your Tuesday, and from vampires to princesses and everything in between, <laughs> trick-or-treaters took over the streets completely oh, in Lexington last night, you. didn't they? Witches and superheroes. <laughs> and yeah, kids all around the bluegrass had some great weather to go out there for trick-or-treating. And we caught up with a few of them. They were going door-to-door -door in the Glendover neighborhood in South Lexington out near Nicholasville Road. My favorite thing about trick or treating is the haunted house in our neighborhood. I yes, get to be with a lot of friends and see a lot of neat costumes. I think one time I got like gum and toys. It's fun to trade off. <laughs> that you get all this candy, and, and that and that you get to stay up late. <laughs> 
<laughs> Girago, he's cute. <laughs> yeah, that was a fun part. Yeah, right. He was. Uh, if your kids don't feel like eating all the candy they got, or you don't want them to, mm -hmm. uh, you could take some of it out to Fayette Mall Dental. For every pound of candy you bring in, you'll receive one dollar, and that candy then eventually will be given to first responders. So, so that's a good way yeah. to at least, you know, cut down on the yeah. sugar a little bit. <laughs> and hats off to the dentist trying mm -hmm. to protect those teeth, right? That's right. WKYT this morning, just getting started on your Tuesday, and we are glad you're up and at it with us, getting this brand new day rolling. Still ahead on WKYT, it's officially November, believe it or not, and the countdown to Thanksgiving is now on. Find out how one company is helping you get your turkey in about 10 minutes. Also ahead on WKYT, double, double boil and pedal. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> Some witches in Florida, they traded in their brooms for bikes, all in the name of charity. And we're going to have that story for you coming up after Micah's forecast. We're now at 64 degrees in Lexington. And you go down 64, same story. Much warmer air today and tomorrow, but big changes coming in the forecast later on in the work week. I'll get into that coming up next. Now, your zone by zone forecast with meteorologist Micah Harris. 50s and 60s early this morning when typically we're right there in the 40s for overnight lows. So it just goes to show you it's much warmer this morning than what we have felt the past few mornings. And it gets much warmer toward the afternoon. I mean, we start off with temperatures like these in the 60s and 50s. I mean, you know it's going to be a warm day, especially this time of year. We're at 80 degrees later on this afternoon. Back in 1987, we reached a record high of 83 degrees, and we have not topped that since then. We'll see if we'll actually do that. That's here in Lexington. We'll see if we'll actually do that. But nonetheless, everybody will be warm. Everybody will be dry. 75 degrees as we head off toward the evening hours. Sitting out on that patio for dinner. That's, that's a, highly, a highly likely scenario right there for you guys. Then we look toward mid and late week. We get in towards your Thursday because that's when a front starts to push on through. So to be warm today, warm tomorrow, both days carbon copies of each other, lower 80s, gusty winds, and mixture of sun and clouds. But then Thursday, we bring in those rain chances into the forecast. So going out to the ball fields on Thursday, it may be a little wet for you guys, especially as we're heading off toward the afternoon hours when some of these showers and thunderstorms slide on in. It won't be widespread rain, and it won't be a lot of rain, but it will be a decent shot at actually seeing some showers and thunderstorms out and about. It won't be a line either, so we're going to get kind of hit and miss activity. But once that pushes on through, much cooler air slides on in on your Friday. That means Friday night football is going to be very chilly because highs are only in the 50s. That means Friday night football around 7, 8, 8 p.m. We're going to be seeing temperatures there in the 40s. Check out these pictures I told you yesterday. I'd still show them off early this morning. It says, in a world full of princesses, why not be a zombie? My two-year-old <laughs> Isabel. That's a cute picture from Beth Willoughby. All right, let's check out another one. Here's twins off in the crib. And, and I get it. I know the parents sitting here going, you just know this. It probably took 10 minutes to take this picture. And they're all just <laughs> snapping. They're like, right here. Look up here. I've that done that for so the past true. three years. But that's a cute picture right there. And Finally, you're just like, you know what, I give up. Let's just send in a picture. But cute picture right there of those twins. And then Summer and Ethan out of Georgetown. Pretty cool shot right there. Got a little monkey standing beside you right there. So here's a seven day forecast 80 degrees today and tomorrow. And then Thursday, we'll bring in the rain chances, guys, off towards your weekend. Check that out. Fall back on Sunday. It's coming up on us. It's unbelievable. Yeah, but we're going to be throwing those, uh, those times back. At least one or one hour. Yeah. So that, that helps us out a little bit. <laughs> Get that extra, that bad. little extra really hour of sleep. Really good for us, yeah. especially. Very good. We love that. Very dark and reasonable. Day. Well, that was something about Halloween, you know, but the fact that it was still daylight for yes. a lot of the trick or treating, which is, uh, yeah, it's, it's it probably was a lot safer, obviously. Right. All right, thank you, Micah. Well, maybe you saw plenty of ghosts, vampires, and witches <laughs> on Halloween night. But you probably didn't see uh, any of them doing this. Some people in Florida saw a cackle of good witches out and about on Halloween. They were brewing up trouble for a good cause. A group of women dressed as witches ditched their brooms and hopped on bikes instead. It was all to raise money for the Children's Volunteer Health Network. Looks like they had a good time with it. Yeah, they did. <laughs> you can tell. A good excuse. All for a good cause, though. A good so excuse right. for adults to be out there. Like there you that. go. That's exactly <laughs> all right. right. There you go. Okay, it's uh, coming up on 517 on WKYT. And we're so glad you're along with us here Tuesday morning. And when we come back, we'll take a look at your money. 
Hey there, good morning. Welcome back into WKYT this morning on the first day of November. Can you believe that? No. I mean, <laughs> and the weather's not yeah, doing us any favors in getting <laughs> acclimated to it. In that mood, it. right? Well, it's Tuesday morning, everybody, at 520. One major car company is making it easier to use your smartphone with your car. And do you need some help getting that Thanksgiving turkey prepared? Well, we've got you covered this morning. Brooke Silverbraga has the latest on your money. Toyota is launching new technology to simplify car sharing. A pilot program will launch in January in San Francisco using a system that lets users unlock the doors and start the ignition using their smartphone. Toyota also plans to create a lease that will allow the lessee to rent out their car and use the income to pay off the lease. Stocks finished October with a fairly flat day Monday, the Dow dropping 18, the Nasdaq losing less than a point. New Jersey drivers are waking up to much more expensive gas. A tax hike of 23 cents per gallon is going into effect. Yesterday, the Garden State had the second lowest gas tax in the country. Today, it's the sixth highest. And Butterball is offering a new way to get help with that Thanksgiving turkey. Since 1981, they've staffed a telephone helpline. Now struggling cooks can text their questions for turkey cooking guidance in the week leading up to Thanksgiving. And that's your Money Watch. For more, log on to CBSMoneyWatch.com. In New York, I'm Brooke Silva Breck. Well, bad news for Britain. Their new British pound coin is causing some headaches. The coin won't fit in most existing vending machines, lockers, and shopping carts. That's because of the shape. It's got 12 sides. The vending machines will have to be updated, and that will not come cheap. The Automatic Vending Association estimates it will cost the industry millions to make sure the 500,000 vending machines across the UK will accept the new coin. Yeah, yeah. that is a problem, isn't it? Well, I would say there's, think a, they there's would a reason. Think that through. There's a reason wheels are round and coins yes, too, right? Yes, exactly. <laughs> Don't fix it Somebody if it's not Somebody to be broke, creative. People. Yeah. yeah. Five, I mean, it's cool, but <laughs> sure. But can't use it. <laughs> Five twenty-two on WKYT this morning, and hey, we have a lot more news coming up. Our top stories here in just a few minutes on your morning news and sports is coming up next. Have a pretty nice start to the day. Very mild temperatures outside in Boyle County, 61 degrees. I'm WKYT meteorologist Micah Harris. Give me updated on your morning. I hope everybody had a great Halloween. It was perfect weather for us yesterday, wasn't it? I mean, really, really nice as we went out and about trick or treating. 80 degrees later on this afternoon. So as we go through your day, no rain chance, gusty winds, mixture of sun and clouds, and right around 80 degrees. We'll take it. It looks pretty good, even off toward the evening. We're there in the mid 70s. Let's check out sports. See what's going on. Kentucky football has made quite a comeback after the first two weeks of the season. One question this weekend is, will the fans come back? The Cats have won five of their last six and have a showdown with Georgia Saturday night. The best crowd of the year was the season opener against Southern Miss. Still about 4,000 short of a sellout. Mark Stoops would like to see it filled up for Georgia and so would his players. Our players uh, would love to, to see that happen. Uh, our fan base... Um, you know, has been uh, there, there's been a lot of loyal fans to us, and uh, and we just need more. You know, we need more people in there to fill it up. I'd love to see it filled, and and uh, and again, uh, I make no bones about it. When we see it filled, uh, I expect our team to play at a high level to make that those, those fans proud. No reason it should not be capacity Saturday. The Wildcats return home this weekend to host Georgia. The Dogs two and four in league play. Coming off a loss to Florida, kickoff set for 7.30 on the SEC Network. The U.K. basketball Wildcats beat Clarion by 57 in the exhibition opener Sunday. Although the win came against an inferior opponent, the Cats appeared to have a lot of chemistry. Dishing out 29 assists. That's more assists than U.K. had in any game last season, certainly. 11 of the 29 assists were made by Isaiah Briscoe, who's become the leader of this team. I like the fact that we had... 29 assists um, and you know everybody had some opportunities um, but you know again it starts with Isaiah Briscoe um, and he's coaching De'Aaron Fox uh, he's coaching these guys he's talking if you listen you hear his voice more than you even hear mine which is perfect which is what I want 
That is a look at sports tonight. Game six of the World Series. Will the Indians close it out or will the Cubbies force game seven? We'll find out tonight. That's sports. Have a great day.